on the next episode of Sip Suds and Smokes. I'll talk a little bit about the uh, trip, food, some people along the way. We're going to have some beer uh, that we picked up uh, through the trip. The road trip beers we'll be tasting and discussing today are from Trillium Brewing Company in Boston, Massachusetts, the Riverway IPA, from The Alchemist in Stowe, Vermont, the Focal Banger American IPA, from Other Half in New York City, the Green City Double Dry Hop Hazy IPA, from Hudson Valley Brewing in Beacon, New York, Say No More Dark Lager, from Pretentious Barrel House and Derive Brewing in Columbus, Ohio, Concurrence, a Saison aged in Chardonnay barrels, and then from Parsons North Brewing Company in Columbus, Ohio, a Mulberry Saison. We'll be right back after this break. live from the dude in the basement studios why because that's where the good stuff is it's sip suds and smokes with your smoke and host the good old boys Suds, suds, it's time for more suds. Hmm, welcome everyone to another sud segment where we say life is a trip. So make sure you slow down and take time to enjoy the scenery. Hmm. Oh, and don't forget to visit a brewery or two or 20 along the way. I mean, responsibly, of course, but yeah. Is this a dispensary and a brewery? Because I need to hit it both ways. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> oh, do you now? Hey, we're about to head to Massachusetts, so you know it's wow. going to be happening that way. Well, okay then. I'm one of your hosts, Good Gal Juliana, and joining me at the table today is Good Boy Mike. Um, you know, I have not earned my merit badge for clamming yet, but I am willing to take that on. So uh, I'll enjoy telling that story today. Okay, Good Boy Kendall. Hello. I didn't know we were here for merit badges. <laughs> right? Um, you are wearing the most appropriate shirt. You for today. are, yes. Um, that is not lost on me. Yeah. Good old boy Drew. Hello, Culver. You know, it was interesting uh, when I heard about tripping with Mike. I didn't realize there were tripping. roads involved. Uh-huh. Oh. But I'm here anyway. Well, that's sweet. Puff twice and exhale. <laughs> Wow, where's Burger when you need him? Mm-hmm. Um, good old boy Dave. I uh, have not felt comfortable since Mike said something about hitting it both ways. <laughs> so, oh, you're our delicate. This is flower. not a safe place. It's not. It never is. Um, well, good old boy Mike has been out on the road, as you could tell from our conversation, seeing the sights, kissing a new gal in every town. Ta- oh, wait, we weren't you, supposed to say definitely that. Not. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Mike. Why don't you tell us what you've been doing on the road? <laughs> so uh, this um, idea just kind of started with uh, my dad and I and just visiting some friends. Uh, and one person in, turned into another stop and another stop. And so we went on this huge walkabout uh, from in the U.S. Uh, from Cape Cod. Um, and uh, we traveled all through the... Uh, Northeast and then a bit south and swung uh, right through uh, Juliana's part of the world. Uh, the and best state in I uh, I now the know world? exactly Western. how high the Allegheny Mountains are. So Western PA. Um, oh well, then that's not my side. Yeah. So um, well, Scranton. You know, I drew through uh, through there. So you did. Yeah, we did. Aww. Um, did you stop at 81? that? Uh, yeah, stuck a toe in West Virginia mm-hmm. along the way. Mm-hmm. And, did you get it back? Uh, yeah. Um, so it gave me a, a free piece of chocolate and said, thanks. And, um, and please exit now. 
uh, and then all the way to uh, Fort Wayne, Indiana. So along the way, um, you know, a lot of interesting uh, storylines for the for the trip. I'll talk a little bit about uh, the uh, trip, food, uh, some people along the way. We're going to have some beer uh, that we picked up uh, through the trip. And, you know, I think some observations about kind of the, I don't know, the state of beer, you know, through that I kind of was taking notice. Got to run into some fans along the way. So if you said hello to me, thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, if you uh, didn't know it was me sitting in the bar, all the better. So <laughs> with that, let's uh, let's talk about the beers that we're going to have for today. Well, okay. Um, good old boy, Drew. Why don't you give us today's lineup? The road trip beers we'll be tasting and discussing today are from Trillium Brewing Company in Boston, Massachusetts, the Riverway IPA, from The Alchemist in Stowe, Vermont, the Focal Banger American IPA, Mm -hmm. from Other Half in New York City, the Green City uh, Double Dry Hopped Hazy IPA, from Hudson Valley Brewing in Beacon, New York, Say No More Dark Lager, From Pretentious Barrel House and Derive Brewing in Columbus, Ohio, Concurrence, a Saison aged in Chardonnay barrels. And then last but not least, from Parsons North Brewing Company in Columbus, Ohio, a Mulberry Saison. Mulberry. Mm. What's a mulberry? A very wide variety of beers that I've selected for a flight for Mulberries taste like (laughs) snozberries. Wow. Well, thanks, Drew. Go to boy, Mike. Why don't you give us the suds ratings, but please do it in a manner of someone stuck in traffic on a hot July day. <laughs> well, that is- and on the Ohio interstate due to road construction, which God bless America. That is the bane of my existence this year. Mm-hmm. Highly Sorry. specific. Yeah. Well, there's Very plenty of uh, crappy roads in many, many states. We're going to be uh, tasting and discussing these rating these uh, beers with these sud ratings plus our signature belching sounds. And here are those ratings now. Please do not cut in front of me. Uh, that number one, that sucks. Give me anything but a turn single, you jackass, because clearly you don't know what one one is. Uh, yeah, that's just not your finger pointing right. Uh, so um, sud rating number two. Was that a bird? Did that guy just flip me a bird? (laughs) It's a different hand gesture in Oklahoma. I just want to say that. Uh, So it's rating a three. Ah, what a relief. My exit is only one mile away. We should be there in an hour. (laughs) So it's rating number four. A body should really not make that sound since we're about 40 miles from the nearest rest stop. Hold it. Hold it. Yeah. By the way. Ohio's just completely decided to close down every rest area all at once, simultaneously. All of them. All of them. There is no such thing as a rest area in Ohio. So just. They don't want you there. Yeah. Just go. You will know no rest. Yeah, for sure. Sudge rating number five. Listen to that hang time. Give me another reason to lay on the horn. As if there was a reason to do it. All right, cool. So. Let's start in Boston. Boston. All right. Well, uh, so uh, Trillium is uh, where we're kind of starting at least the beer part of the story. And uh, Trillium has uh, been around for a while now. And I find their distribution model is a very interesting thing that's going on in a number of breweries nationwide where they've kind of localized um, distribution and self-distributed. So um, – I believe they have six tap rooms now for uh, Trillium in and around the Boston area. And uh, they even serve Trillium beer at, I believe, at the Red Sox um, at Fenway. Fenway. They do. Yeah. They even have a a tap room that is right outside Fenway. And that is exactly where I picked this beer up is at that brand new tap room. I had never been to it. Hmm. I'd been to the other tap rooms uh, in and around, but this was my first time at this one. Pretty cool. Uh, Nice, uh, nice location. Um, It was, it was the middle of the day. 
Um, and Boston, uh, that means nothing. Yeah, I'd actually <laughs> gone on a tour of Fenway Park. Uh, I highly recommend that you do that. Uh, even if you are a superior intellectual that is a Yankees fan like myself and Juliana <laughs> uh, and Andrew, um, you can still wander onto Fenway and not uh, self-ignite. So um, I just, you know, stared at the Babe Ruth bottle or uh, Babe Ruth bottle. Wow. Babe is that the Ruth one he used ball, to use between innings? Uh, yeah. That is there at Fenway. No, I mean, between? there's – Look, <laughs> there's if you, a lot of cool history. If you are a Yankee fan, you are a fan of baseball. Okay? Oh, yeah. You are. Like, and so it is not beneath me to go to – Fenway, and I've been to Fenway a couple of times. I like that. And I've lived to tell the tale. (laughs) However, I will not wear red there, and I will proudly wear my blue and white. I did. Um, Which, you know, I'm allowed to, right? People threw uh, dull, blunt objects at me in the middle of the tour. Because I (laughs) am a Yankee fan, but I can appreciate the history of Fenway. And I like the tour. I've done the tour myself, and I, I like it. It was. I learned an awful lot about uh, not just Fenway, but I think the history of baseball. Yeah. The the one fact uh, um, that I did not realize was the current configuration of the monster actually hangs over the street. And they actually have to pay the city for the aerial rights to use that space yeah, isn't uh, that over, crazy? over the street itself. So. That was kind of interesting. I never knew why it was called the Presky Pole. I think that's right. Um, so it was a fascinating story. Um, and I'm not going to retell it here, but um, I knew the story about the red chair. Um, but the museum that was out in left field was really fascinating. And it was filled with a lot of not only cool memorabilia, but, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of histories for baseball, you mm-hmm. know. Yeah, um, yeah, it's almost like a mini Cooperstown. Oh, it's away. literally in left field. I, okay, sorry, yeah, I thought you is, were making a joke. No, <laughs> literally is, and it is in left field. Yeah, yeah, that is correct. Yeah. So back to the story of Trillium. They have actually a food court that is there that is uh, like a co-op food court, and you there are some of these that are through you know other parts of the country where uh, it's. Nobody's there as kind of a permanent, you know, uh, venue. You know, people kind of come and go. Mm-hmm. Sometimes it's a combination of food trucks and other transient, you know, restaurants that are coming through there. This one uh, is actually sponsored by Time Out, which is like a, a weekly, you know, publication. Mm-hmm. Time um, Out Boston. Yeah. yeah. And uh, so the Trillium, the Trillium uh, Tap Room is right beside that. And it's a freestanding facility. And... Uh, they have a – I definitely think of how does it compare to Fort Point because that is such a great, you know, facility. Uh, I love the tap room on the first. I love the restaurant on the second floor. I love the, the rooftop bar there. They really kind of have it all. So the main reason why I went to, uh, to this was for two. One, it was conveniently uh, located and right next to Fenway. And uh, I had never been there. So I was kind of curious to do a little bit of scouting. But – the beer that uh, I got to bring back is one of the ones that we'll get to talk about here in just a bit. But I will give you one fair warning. That place has the worst parking lot on the free planet. And no matter what it says about saying that you will get two hours of free parking, you will pay $75 <laughs> to park there. <sighs> to be continued. Welcome back, everyone. Today, good old boy Mike is reminiscing about his road trip. And um, right now, he's in Boston. Do tell. Uh, yeah. Uh, can you move out of the way, buddy? Yeah. <laughs> I need hey, to get buddy, in that lane. Watch out! <laughs> That's pretty much how you're greeted in Boston. So uh, we were talking about the new uh, Trillium Tap Room at Fenway. Um, it's actually, you know, probably a couple blocks away from Fenway uh, is where it's at. Um, great uh, selection of beers on tap as well as packaged products to uh, walk away with as well. So I didn't feel like there was some grand compromise. You know, sometimes when you do this, you're like, oh, well, they only have like half of the things that, you know, I can get at the other location, you know. So, but I didn't feel like that at all. Um, they definitely had a great selection. The beer we're having today is uh, Riverway, right? 
Is that correct? Yeah. No. The Riverway, yeah. Riverway the IPA, which I had not, not had before. And I had a flight of, I don't know, probably eight beers while I was there. And uh, this one definitely kind of captured my attention. What do you guys think about this? Okay, so the Emerald Necklace series tells a foundational piece of Trillium brewing history. And what I like about Trillium, like their cans, is that they're usually something about some part of Boston. Yes, like and, Congress and, Street. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, and North Point, et cetera. Okay, so this is the second beer in this series. Takes us to the River Ray, which is a 34-acre park that serves mm-hmm. as a border between Boston and Brookline. Is that the Charles River? Which Brookline is another beer, I mm-hmm. believe, that they have. It so is. The dual hop with two favorites from the Pacific Northwest, Citra and Mosaic. Um, and this is 7% ABV. Does not drink like 7%. No, no. it doesn't. But I, I do get a sweetness to this. This yeah, it's a little sweet for me, and I'm wondering if that might just be some of the impression from the alcohol. Maybe, mm. it's Maybe. got that, that creamy kind of mouth feel. Well, sure, because this has two row barley rolled oats and C15. Mm. Mm. Oats. I'm liking this trend. You know, I think so many of the early Trillium beers that we've both had on the show and that I remember tasting are definitely jacked up hop machines mm-hmm. that are you know quite invasive you know as well uh we briefly mentioned congress street you know and to me that's kind of like their i don't know their uh that was their coming out party you know yeah. that that was uh the cornerstone of their style of beers the thing i liked about the riverway was um it was very approachable i thought that it had kind of progressed it wasn't a hot bomb um uh, and you know it was one of these things where i could have half a glass and go, hmm, I'll actually have, you know, another one of these. Um, yeah. yeah, this one's easy. Very easy yeah. drinking. It's, yes. Yeah, very um, crushable. The, uh, it it yeah. doesn't taste 7%. No, I like the combination of Citra and Mosaic as well. Yeah. The only better combination would have been Mosaic and Mosaic. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, in fact, I did pick up a beer just for Dave there. It is actually called Free Rise, and it is a Mosaic double dry hop Saison style. See? Oh. There you go. Uh, so uh, we're not going to review that here, but I saw that, and I enjoyed that there. And I'm like, hmm, this is Dave's jam. Thanks, buddy. Yep. Aw, well, that's so sweet. Um, yeah. Other comments? Like it? No? It's yes. okay. It's just another hazy. It's not bad, but yeah. I am I like it, but I don't know if I would want to drink a couple pints. Yeah. I would have one and probably move on to the next thing on the board. Okay. Yeah. I think that's yeah. a, it's well done, it's but a fair assessment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. So the Riverway from Trillium, we are going to rate a three. All right. Tasty way to start. All right. But uh, one of the interesting trends as we'll talk about some of the other breweries that we have in the tasting today is embracing other styles. Uh, and so I definitely think of Trillium as being very hop forward and, uh, was really looking for them to have a good solid mild on, you know, a good solid pilsner, you know, on. And? And I was, that was not the case. Yeah. And, uh, I just, mm. uh, you know, there were some good solid sour beers that they had there. And I brought one of those back, it was actually a barrel aged, um, product from Trillium for nice. us to enjoy. But, uh, yeah, I just felt like this was, you know, shades of yet another storyline. Yeah. Uh, for sure. Interesting. Okay. Um, You know, the next part of this trip, uh, we actually uh, took a trip down to Kumaquid. And I know what you're saying uh, as I say that, which Hmm. is, "Mm, where is Kumaquid, Mike? Um, So (laughs) Kumaquid is right next to Hyannis and Hyannis Port, Mm. uh, which is kind of the southern part of Cape Cod. And uh, I believe that's Hyannis. Um. And I got to go uh, clamming uh, with our good friend Jack right out in Buzzard Bay. What kind of clams? Um, I don't know. Clams from Buzzard Bay. Understood. <laughs> uh, and uh, so the tide went out, and boy, you could just see forever. I mean, it was the 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 tide probably only shifted about maybe three, four feet, depending on where you were looking at through Buzzard Bay. But man, when it moves out, you could walk a good mile. Uh, on the sand easily. And um, so we went clamming as the tide was out. 
and got to collect about 20 clams. First time I'd been uh, through that experience, and we actually charbroiled those up and got to enjoy them with a little bit of bacon on the top, and they were absolutely delicious. And uh, I think that uh, Jack should just sell that as a tourist experience all into himself because it was pretty cool. And getting to uh, sail around uh, Hyannis and Hyannis Port uh, while we were there, um, it was it was a very cool experience. You know, a lot of people head to that uh, part of uh, Cape Cod, and they're very focused on hitting the ferries to go to Nantucket and to Martha's Vineyard. And I think you're missing out. Um, I don't think you have to hop on either one of those to really have a great time, you know, right there in the area. So I highly recommend that. It actually is, uh, what was the, um, that is the home of uh, Cape Cod Potato Chips. They uh, make that right there. Oh, And there's a local brewery in town that is super local uh, that I got to uh, try there. But uh, I could mention it, but you would go, hmm, never heard of that. Do they have a clam stout? Uh, No, they did not. Yeah. Disappointing. Missed opportunity for sure. For sure. Oh, for sure. Well, the next beer that we have in the lineup is from Other mm-hmm. Half, and uh, I have some uh, stories about. Oh, I'm sorry. This skipping. is. Oh, I've skipped a focal banger. Yep. Yeah. I'm now, sorry. This it's one, from The Alchemist. Yep. Yeah. Yep. This will Don't. be interesting because this one also has. Yes. Citra and mosaic. And mosaic oh. Yes. Mm-hmm. So I, I love Mr. Kimmich. I really, really do. Um, I mean, and we've all had this beer. A lot. Well, mm. not enough. Not, never enough, right? Yeah. Did you know that they are a solar powered brewery now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. which is pretty it's Vermont. Yeah. yeah, that checks. Okay, yeah. well, your that's... front lawn is a solar panel off the grid. <laughs> okay, that's fair. That's fair. For those of you that are under a rock and do not know what Focal Banger is, it is a 7% ABV American IPA that is brewed with mosaic and citra. Um, and it's, well, and guys, British malt. It yes. doesn't suck. Completely different beer from the last one. one of, yeah, mm-hmm. one of my favorite beers. Yeah. So uh, uh, the thing that struck me about this is how intensely bitter this is. Mm-hmm. Um, well, compared yes. to the first beer. Yeah. Yeah. Coming yeah. off sure. that last one. Yeah. 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 Uh, there's nothing soft or subtle about this at all. No. This Kinda is like Mr. Kimmich. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it feels like clubbing your palate. Um, I don't like that insolent totally. tone. Yeah. Uh, what would you guys think about it this time around? God, it's still freaking gorgeous. Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. I, haven't, I haven't had this beer since Tuesday, so <laughs> I was wow. fortunate to get to Poor drink guy. a can while we while I watched uh, some baseball with a friend. But, yeah, yeah, it's been a few days. But, yeah, I love this beer, even more so than the famous Heady Topper, which most people think of as the Alchemist. I know, right? I've always liked Focal Banger better than um, Heady yep. Topper. I just I, love the way it drinks. I brought back a case of Focal Banger and a half a case of Heady Topper. And I for love that the bitterness of this. Yeah. That's what I like about it. Yeah. It's just w- really well done bitterness. Yeah. And it's something you don't get in a it, lot of other hazies from the region. Well, like they've, they've been making this longer than most of the people were, have been making those hazies. Mm-hmm. You know? In fact, they've been Very making true. this longer than some people, but some brewers have been born for that matter. But sure. yeah, I, I mean, this is, this is the classic. This is the OG. This is, I mean, I remember when, God, Mr. Kimmich came to the music came to the city. Yeah, yeah. Music right. City and I just was like, with a cooler he could, of uh, he could brew in a time. trash can and kill it, you know, and yeah. just kill it. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. And the intensity and passion of which he talked about how to drink his beer, mm-hmm. like I still remember, like word for word, almost what he said, and just how it just really like blew me away. You know what I mean? I think uh, there were two storylines that I uh, wanted to talk about, and the reason why I put this particular beer in in the uh, flight, I guess the first thing as we're talking about the beer is I feel like this style is dated. Um, You know, it it uh, it's a beer that I enjoyed. I'm using it in a past tense, you know, component, and I found myself as I was kind of drinking this beer, going, "Oh, I remember this." Hmm, this is not quite as good as I had remembered it. You know, the last time I had it, it's still a great beer. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. It's still fantastic. It's still very well made. But the thing is, is that I don't find a lot of people making the style anymore because they're moving towards a different style of hops. They're integrating oats, you know, into it. 
the flavor profile has kind of shifted, um, not away, but has shifted beyond what I would describe as this, as this taste profile. And I don't know. What do you guys think about that observation? I think everybody's palate goes through shifts and changes. Um, and, and I think, you know, it's kind of like, you know, we were all really into, uh, big barrel aged beers and then we were into sours and then we were into pastry hop wars yeah you know then it was the hop wars and now it's back to pilsners and beer flavored beer and things like that and i know like a lot of people like i i really do still enjoy like if i can get my hands on a treehouse beer or something like that but they're very sweet compared to this mm. and they're and it's kind of a one note sort of thing like to me this is a more balanced approach to beer. It's on the more bitter side, but you're still getting some malt. You're still getting hops and you're, and you're getting the bigger picture. And it's not, it, it, it's making you, you know, kind of use all your taste buds in a yeah. way to me. Yeah, that's a good analogy. Mm-hmm. And this, I don't know, for me, and maybe I'm, I'm an outlier here, but I'm almost getting sick of the sweet. And um, mm-hmm. I'm enjoying the Pilsners, but I'm, my pendulum is swinging back towards the bitter and back towards like a West Coast, maybe like a New Age West Coast. But this is, is fitting the bill for me because this is that strong astringency. Um, now, is it as good as it was in the beginning? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like that's that's a fair assessment because I was so jaded in the beginning of like, oh my god, the heavens have opened up, and now I've tried Focal Banger. I can die a happy girl. Um, hype. right, right. But I mean, are we getting hype on some other breweries though too? Like, yep. You know. Um. But to me, this can still stand the test of time, mm. and I'm glad that he's still producing this and that he hasn't swayed. In a completely different direction. Though, I mean, he does dabble, but I, yeah, this is classy. Hmm. Yeah, and I think you're right that this does reference a point in time, but I like going back there. Yeah. You know, and, and I think what he does with the hops in this and the flavor and aroma and bitterness he brought was ahead of its time, and it's informed this whole generation of people that are starting to play with hops now. But the thing I miss about most hoppy beers now is the bitterness. Like you said, they're, been, they're too sweet yeah. for me. So I, I am just always going to prefer bitter. You know, whether it's an IPA or a Pilsner or anything, I want that hop balance uh, really pushing up against the malt. So that's why I love this. That bitterness is classic. Well, I'm going to keep us all super honest. Uh, at some point in time, I'm going to toss this into a blind, and you're not going to know when I'm going to do it. Uh, because um, I really wonder if this would be a beer that we would taste off a tap, and then we would say, I want a full pint of that. Because I'm betting, I'm betting nobody here would do that, you know. Um, but I think we're looking at the can, and we know the storyline, and I think we love Kimmich, and um, there's a lot to that. Um, the other half of the story I want to tell was uh, another story of distribution, but it's not quite the one that you know we were talking about, which is so the Alchemist does distribute um, sparingly. <laughs> And I plan to actually go up to Stowe and make the trip up there and go see, you know, um, Sugar Maple Farm that we have and, uh, you know, kind of tool around, you know, some of the rest of Stowe. And I decided instead to go to a co-op in uh, White River Junction. Great choice. Um, I'm so glad that I uh, decided to uh, check out a different place, you know, in Vermont and get a a real beat on what kind of things look like in other parts of Vermont. I had been to White Junction before. By the way, if you want to go to uh, Fat Daddy's Barbecue all day long, it's absolutely the best barbecue place and 100 miles around there. Really great. He used to have a small bottle shop at Fat Daddy's as well. And um, unfortunately, uh, they closed that and put a salad bar instead. I have no idea what who was at that meeting, but I wasn't. <laughs> and um, yeah. But I definitely have to say that local co-op that I went to there, uh, White River is right on the border between, uh, Vermont and New Hampshire. So on one side of the, uh, Connecticut River is, is Vermont. The other side is, um, uh, New Hampshire. And, uh, there's a co-op on both sides as well. And so I went to the co-op that was on the Vermont side. Very nice gentleman, uh, helped me in there. Super, uh, knowledgeable. 
Um, great beer selection at that co-op. I ended up walking out with three cases of beer and couldn't have been happier that day. And so I was able to pick up everything from the Alchemist as well as some things in Burlington. Um, I picked up a local beer from River Roost. It was an IPA. Um, that is, uh, it was a really great uh, stop uh, the whole day. And uh, I would highly encourage you to look for some alternative place to get the Alchemist. It looks like you can pick those up at many co-op stores uh, throughout the Vermont region. So love for you to go up to Stowe and definitely make the trip there or head up to uh, some other breweries that are in the area as well. But uh, you don't have to make that full trek all the way to the north side of uh, Vermont. Now. Their co-ops must be a lot different from ours. Yeah, yeah. Right. They, they are very different. And yeah. I was going to say, too, if you drive up to Stowe and get it fresh, you'll also probably be driving near Ben & Jerry. So get, yep. some, get some ice cream while you're up Absolutely. there. Get some Von Trapp. It's a beautiful place. Yeah, get and Von Trapp, too, is like some, right down the street. Absolutely. Some, yeah. uh, schnitzel. Super, uh, super good beer. All right, on to the other half of New York. Well, oh, are we going to sure. rate? Oh, I'm sorry. Yes. Yes. This guy is on his road trip. And <laughs> I, I, I know. Um, okay, yeah. so Kendall and I are going to say five, and the rest of the humans <laughs> at this table are going to say three. I was going to say four. four. Uh, four. Okay. Uh, interesting mixed bag. That's all I yeah. have to say. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Well, um, now on to our other half. Okay, right? yes. Now, interestingly... When I think of other half, I'm thinking of all the vegetables, right? Like the broccoli, the broccoli and cheddar and all those weird things. But this other half, this Green City, is a flagship beer it of is. theirs. Yep. Um, and this is 7% ABV. It's got Centennial Citra and Simcoe. Um, so this beer, I did not... Uh, I picked this up in New Hampshire. Um, I actually got it right at a local store. That was where we were staying in New Hampshire and uh, right next to my summer home uh, there. And um, really fascinating uh, distribution story. Before we cut out here to break, who wants to guess how much I paid for this four pack? $35. $24.99. Very close. Thirty-two dollars is what I paid for this <laughs> what? Yes, that is correct. In the I know. Name what of- percentage of that was tax? Yeah. Holy <laughs> yeah, mother of children. So I have actually bought the same exact beer at our home in Florida at this and on Venice Island and uh, paid about the same either way. So. This is a very interesting story of how much would you pay for other? I wonder it's called Green City uh, for sure. Yeah, take sure. Green, we'll part talk is they about don't get the enough. beer uh, shortly after we come back from this break. But uh, that's crazy. Yeah, really, uh, I you know actually the price was not on the four pack until I went up to the counter and I was like, wait, what? Wow. <laughs> we'll be back in just a brief minute. Welcome back, everyone. Today's episode we are talking to Mike about his recent road trip up to the Great Northeast and the beer that we started on before the break, I know, right, is Green City's Double Dry Hopped Hazy IPA from Other Half. Uh, So this is, uh, yeah, Green City. Um, The, uh, I know we were talking about the price, you know, of this four pack. I was just absolutely floored by that. And so I've found that, you know, this is some of the the footprint of what other half is doing is actually moving, you know, some of their select products. The other one I picked up was called Forever. Um, I think there was an, uh, even a third, uh, you know, other half that I picked up as well. Look, they make great beer. I love other half. Uh, they make fantastic beers. It's definitely, you know, moving in some of the same space that Alchemist used to be in, which is, you know, um, wow, I don't know how much I would honestly pay for that, but yet here, take my money. Um, so this is a beer. I don't know that everybody's had this beer before. Uh, no, I don't, right. rem- I don't remember. No, we well, have far away. I'm Tell prob- us what you like about have. Green City or don't like. Yeah. I like that. It's really light. It, it almost, it's got a creamy mouthfeel, but it almost feels like a, a Pilsner on the side that it just it's a real light body. You got that little bit of creaminess, mm. but the the way almost they like use the noble hops, yeah, you know, the way they creamy. use the hops um, really balanced. There's almost uh, unlike the last beer, there's almost no bitterness on this, but it's still refreshing and easy drinking. There's not, it's not, it does not feel like a seven percent beer. I think you could almost drink too much of this. 
Mm. Yeah, it's uh, sneaky. What do you think, Drewski? It's a really good beer. I just uh, don't think I would ever buy it. (laughs) At thirty four, yeah. thirty five dollars yeah. a four pack, like I, I'd look at it and be like, "Wow, they're very proud of their beer," and picks up something else. Yeah, I'd be yeah. like, uh, "Where's the rest I'd of the twelve pass. pack?" Yeah, seriously. If I, I knew how much it cost, eighteen pack, <laughs> yeah. you know, like I mean, <laughs> you know, with if if you remove the cost from the equation, it's just solid beer. You know, it's enjoyable. I like it, but I mean, yeah, I like it. It's, it's, it's just good. it's a fine hazy IPA, but for the price, the value is just well, not no. there. Well, no, I mean the the That's price exactly of it. Exactly why I put yeah, it in this flight. The price of it does stink absolutely not in, in a way. Yeah. Um, but if you could get it for eighteen bucks, would yeah. yeah. I'd buy a four pack for eighteen. That's even high for mm. what I spend on a four pack. You know, True, but but that's, maybe I would I would probably still pay thirteen for a six pack with twelve ounce Billsners. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's fair. Well, we are going to rate the Green City from other half a three. Really? <laughs> Let's move on down the road because uh, I uh, follow the highlighted def- route. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's about all I heard for uh, the whole month. Uh, you made a wrong turn. Just keep going forward. Uh, <laughs> so absolutely something I wanted to put on my way was uh, a trip uh, to stop in Beacon, New York, to Whee! go to Hudson Valley. And uh, I'd never been there. Julianne and Dave have uh, been there uh, before. Um, and uh I had a much longer story to tell, but I'm going to abbreviate it for the, for the sake of time. All I have to say is, is that apparently is, is the town where most senior citizens are escaping, uh, on all major roadways because as we're driving into the brewery, there was, uh, one guy that was, you know, on a walker that he was actually going down the side of the road on his walker. There's no, there was absolutely no, uh, berm or sidewalk or anything else. Was he else. headed yeah. to the brewery? He, and uh, of course, you know, you go down the road about another 200 yards and there's the assisted living facility yeah. that he escaped from, you know, and, uh, this was a theme that I saw not once, not twice, but six times on this one visit to Beacon, New York, <laughs> where there's these people who were just, it looked like they were on work release or something, you know, it was just really quite hilarious. Mass exodus. Well, I, I think it's safe to say that, like, Beacon is, it's a small town in the Hudson Valley. It's not as trendy as some of the towns in Hudson Valley are. You know what I mean? Like, because nobody was wearing an ankle monitor, but there should have been. But what I'm I'm saying is, is when I think of the Hudson Valley, I think of the people from New York City that are escaping to the country. And I'm using that in quotes. The country. Right. Because that's where Martha Stewart hangs out. They're riding the Metro North. Right, right, right. Because when they need when they feel the need for a little land and a little air, that's where they go. But Beacon is small and tiny, and it's the blue-collar version of what the Hudson Valley is. Very much so. I'd love to talk about Beacon a lot more, and there's a lot more to tell. But I want to spend some time and talk about Hudson Valley itself. Great brewery. Mm -hmm. Um, I uh, had 12 beers uh, to taste while I was there. They were all stunning. And even a lot of styles of beer that I don't like. Um, I thought were very well made, um, and I just it was uh, it blew me away the level of quality of everything that I had there, and I could not wait to see what I could take home and uh, package. Um, and the the ratio between what was available on top and what you could take home for packaging was only about a third of the beers yeah. that were on the tap list were even available to take away. Um, in packaging. So I will tell you that one of those beers that was not available at the tap room was this beer that we're having. I'm going to let Juliana tell everybody what it is. Interesting. So Say No More is only 5% ABV. It is a black lager brew with tetanang and saws hops. No. Would you pay sixteen dollars a four pack for this? Yeah. I would have all day and twice on Sunday. Tall boy, okay. yep, tall boy. This is yep. nice. Um, so, um, I will jump out in the at least the discussion of the tasting. This is cold brew, and in, in a cup all day long. Sure. Uh, mm-hmm. This this is uh, this is absolutely a, a dead on head fake. Um, you 
are waiting for it to taste like something, and this just tastes like one of the best cold brew uh, coffees you've ever had. Yeah. Roasty. Little yeah, cream. it's. I mean, roasty, it's roasty creamy, all day long, but super, creamy. Yes, yeah, super yeah. roasty. And yeah. very different to the... Yeah, we had a dark beer, lager. We, we had, had a dark recently. lager on a different episode earlier today, and it wasn't even <laughs> yeah, remotely very close different. Like very this. different yeah. beers, but I really like this one. But it contains lactose, right? Like, right, Drew? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, was this the one that I looked at? I think so. Okay. Maybe. Maybe. Yes. Maybe. 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 So it doesn't taste like it. I'll say that much. Mm. How about it, Dave? I thought this would be your jam all day long. No, I like this beer a lot. I mean, um, like I said, like we said, that I like. Uh oh, gusher, got some roastiness, uh, creamy mouthfeel. Yeah, I think it's cold brew is a nice way to describe it. So, well, um, I wanted to throw something in our lineup today, both for the storyline of saying, "Listen, you need to get to Hudson Valley," but the other thing is, is that. This beer has hit my short list. This is absolutely uh, on my top five. Well, I know a uh, lot the of the season. The it beers is absolutely a stellar beer. And a lot of the beers, you know, that we've talked about from Hudson Valley before were sort of the lactose sour IPAs and those different kinds of things. And it's nice to know that they can take something like this. It's completely out of that yeah, style. And, yeah, and but what they can do with lychee, huh? Mm. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, Just saying. all their beers are fantastic. They do a great job. Well, let's uh, rate up. Say no more. Then. <gasps> wow, I'm gonna you go really, five. Really honored me, uh, all of you. I'm so glad that you. Uh, wow, it's great. Like that as much as I did. Um, it's I, great. Uh, just absolutely a stunning dark lager, and uh, I was. I felt. Uh, I felt lucky when I found this on my way out of town at a package store that was not at the brewery to be able to bring this back. So um, I was uh, really glad I got to share that with you guys. Yeah, A lot I'm, of other great beers at Hudson Valley. I wanted to mention just one more that I brought back, which was uh, Double Pillow Talk. Um, and uh, really uh, a really great beer. And uh, should definitely check that one out for sure. Yeah. I, most of the beers I've had from these guys are – you know, either lagers or big IPAs. So this is refreshing to have this nice dark lager from them. They did a wonderful job with it. Yeah. Well, cool. I'm so glad I got to share this. Next beer is... From Pretentious. Because we're not pretentious at all when it comes to beer. This one is called Concurrence. 7% ABV. They collaborated on this mixed culture wine barrel age saison with the crew at Derive Brewing. This effervescent Ooh. beer showcases aromatics from the yeast and the wine barrel, and this is aged for eleven months. My eyes are burning. This thing just slaps you right in the face. <laughs> so, a that- little bit of how this uh, beer got in front of us. I was on my way to Columbus, and I actually um, had a fan. Uh, that had uh, reached out and and was kind of noticing I was making my way uh, across the country and said, hey, are you making your way to Ohio? I said, yeah. And they said, listen, uh, stop into Wayland's in uh, Columbus and, uh, you know, pick up uh, some beer. And there were a lot of uh, great things there. I got to talk to the uh, beer manager there at Wayland's uh, in Columbus and very helpful um, another stunning, you know, beer professional. Thank you for putting great stuff on the shelf and, uh, both having knowledge about, uh, a lot of the beers in the area. Uh, I had, uh, Sounders, uh, another beer, uh, that we covered on a different episode, uh, that you can find there. But these beers from Pretentious, uh, all had a very interesting, a uh, combination of some barrel finishes and some other styles and really kind of caught my attention. I have actually not tasted this beer before today. So you're getting to hear how we all enjoy this in real time. What did you think? This was the Saison finished in, in Chardonnay yeah. mm-hmm. then a belch. Wow. Hmm. Delicate. Yeah, I like it. Almost like a cider-like nose. Very delicate, and then almost like little hint of bread, but not much. No, it was, not it was, like just the, like there's something a little interesting there, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it hasn't gone full funk. No, 
I don't like the uh, bitterness coming off it. It kind of throws everything off. It was very pungent on the nose at first, but then it kind of it is. It's sharp, and you think that like, and your um your salivary glands are starting to like go into overdrive, and then it's like soft. We've had some beers that have been bittered with uh, dandelions. Um, and that is the first thing that came to my mind is, you know, some of those dandelion beers. Um, it has almost the exact same, you know, bittering component that you would find. I sometimes put dandelion greens in salad, but uh, the, uh, the salad, they say this is vinaigrette, at least on the nose. Mm-hmm. Say it does soften. And That's so it. It's, it's quite nice. It is not... Uh, I singed my my sinuses initially, but uh, it's much more pleasant than this. I is a lot better on the second and third sip than the yeah. first. Mm-hmm. And it's definitely a sipper. Um, yeah, this is something you have like a half a glass of and go, hmm, oh, that's interesting. Palate cleanser. Well, I that love this it. with some cheese. There you go. You know, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, good yeah, choice. Cheese go with something, but something yet. fatty. You know, on mm-hmm. your palate. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would cut through it. That'd be nice. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it, it like is it. acidic. I think. Sure. Yeah, yeah. There's a touch of it there. A little tartness. Well, I like this. Uh, it's very different, and they had a very interesting lineup. Uh, there was another one that was actually finished in a gin barrel, um, but I don't believe I brought that one back. So maybe we'll reach out to uh, Pretentious and see if they'll send us a whole product line and check this out in a more focused discussion. We Let's must be talking about exigency. Probably. Yes. Let's rate this up there. Yeah. This is, we're going to rate this one a three. Hmm. Cool. Well, in that same store in Waylands, uh, I picked up uh, some other uh, breweries while I was there. And the, uh, yep, the last one uh, we have to uh, chat about is from Parsons North Brewing. And uh, again, um, solid uh, local brewery and uh, doing some interesting styles. And this one kind of, Caught my attention. I'll let Juliana tell us what we're sipping here. Okay. So this is from Parsons Brewing, Parsons North Brewing, and this is a Mulberry Saison. And um, I know. Sorry. I just need a second. That's all right. What are so what are mulberry? mulberries? I don't yep. know. It smells like blueberry. It looks like a big blackberry meets raspberry snozberries taste like snozberries <laughs> so uh the thing that with mulberries to me are uh the sugars and the bitterness are different than those other berries um mulberries tend to be sweeter than blackberries um they don't tend to be as tart as raspberries um so it's kind of cutting in between some of those uh, two major flavor components of sugar and bitterness. Um, I thought the first time that I saw that on the label, I was like, hmm, this is going to be a sink or swim beer. So what do you think? Sink or swim? I feel kind of sinking. I don't know. It's a little dull. It's kind of yeah, meh. It's, it's very know, blueberry It's okay. Yep. You know, it's, yeah. it's, kind of, it's trying to dog paddle, but... I'm not getting much saison. I just get the fruit. I think that's the thing to me. It's like I'm not a huge saison fan, but if I'm going to drink one, let's make it barnyard like a, a real there's, saison. Well, there's almost no carbonation. I want yeah. my saisons to be fizzy. Oh, this is seven point six percent ABV. That's, wow. too, yeah. that's too big for this. This is seven. a two. Cool. Um, yeah, this is like missing the mark. I'm sorry. Mm. Well, uh, that's you know. Kind of the end of uh, our road trip uh, episode for today. I uh, thanks for tasting along with me, guys. Fun. I really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank Hopefully, you, for the you enjoyed the flight. It was uh, some hits, some not so good hits, some you know blasts from the past. So overall, very good. Yeah, I uh, really enjoyed it. I really hope you get out and enjoy a lot of great beer if you're out on the road, and if you run into one of us, say hello. Yeah. Well, that's going to wrap it up for today. Um, go to my mic. Thanks for thinking of us on your road trip, and thanks for some good stories. Cool. Hey, come back. Enjoy another exciting episode of Sip, Sud, and Smokes. I'll ask you to keep on sipping. Go to my Kendall. Thanks for being here. It's always a pleasure. Enjoyed it. Please tell us about your blog. My beautiful wife and I blog about the good news of good beer at beermakes3.com. Go to boy Drew. Thanks for being here. So long, and thanks for all the beer. 
Good old boy, Dan. Hey, buddy, watch out! <laughs> That's Heard you in the car on a daily basis, Pretty isn't much, it? Yeah. Just another day. <laughs> this is good old guy, Juliana. Keep on chuggling and catch you next time. We hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're listening to us online, do yourself a favor and tap. Just tap it in. The subscribe button. Give it a little tappy. Tap, tap, tap a room. The easiest way to listen to our show is to ask Siri, Alexa, Google, Uncle Larry, or whoever it is that talks to you on your phone. Play podcast, Sip, Suds, and Smokes. We love your feedback, and you can reach us at info at sipsudsandsmokes.com. Our tasting notes flow out on Twitter and Instagram with our handle at Sip, Suds, and Smokes, and our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of news. You'll also be able to interact with the thousands, millions, and millions of other fans on those social media platforms. Do us a favor. Take the time to rate this episode if you're listening to us online. That's a big help to us, and we get to see your feedback as well. Come back, join us for another episode, and keep on sipping. Tan Hand production of Sip, Suds, and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time. (laughs) 